Okay, today, so on this clip, we're going to be going over how to derive the der derivative of um, natural logarithm of x using limits. So um, let's write down the task that we're going to accomplish for today. So uh, what we're supposed to do, the task is as follows. Um, we are supposed to prove, prove that that um, the derivative of the natural log of x or ddx of ln x equals 1 over x using uh, the limit definition definition um, of the derivative. Okay? All right. Before we proceed with the execution of the proof, uh, we would like I'd like to go over some key formulas that are needed uh, in order to execute the proof successfully. So these are the key class of key formulas that I'm going to be um, using uh, in the proof. Okay, so key formulas. The first one, of course, is the derivative is the, def the limit definition of the derivative. Okay, so the first formula is uh, the derivative of a function d dx of f of x can be defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay? And then the next uh, formula that you need to know um, has to do with the uh, properties of loveliness. Okay? So the first, the second one, the first uh, property of logarithm I'd like you to recall is the fact that the natural logarithm of x plus, I mean, let's do the minus, minus the natural logarithm of y is the same thing as the natural logarithm of the sum of the arguments that you're taking the natural logarithm of. So it is equal to the natural logarithm of x divided by y. Okay? So if you have natural logarithm of something minus natural logarithm of something else, you think there's a natural logarithm of the quotient. Okay? All right, number three uh, is also another property, a similar property of uh, logarithms. If you have A uh, times the natural logarithm of X, is the same thing as the natural logarithm of X to the A. And the reverse also holds true. Okay? Um, so let me let me... So if you have this, you can end up with that. You can go in, in any direction that you want. All right, um, another formula that uh, you need to know to do this proof has to do with the definition of the number E, okay? So um, E shows E to the X uh, can be defined as the limit as X approaches zero of 1 plus x raised to the 1 over x, okay? So um, these, are the, these are the properties, the formulas that I'm going to be using uh, within this proof, all right? So it's good to know all of these before ever we start, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and start with the proof. Um, so let's write down proof, proof. All right, so let me just write down the task that we want to accomplish before we start, so we know our direction, okay? We must, uh, let, we're gonna start by saying let, um, let's define the function. Let uh, f of x be the function we're talking about, which is the natural logarithm of x. Uh, we must show, we must show that the derivative of the function, which is ddx of the natural logarithm of x, equals one over x, okay? Okay, if I can show that sure this equation is true using the definition of limits, uh, the definition of derivatives, then I will be done with my proof, all right? So let's go ahead and start by indicating what our function is. f of x is the natural logarithm of x. If f of x is the natural logarithm of x, then what is f of x plus h? All you just simply do is replace your argument x with x plus h. So it's going to be the natural logarithm of x plus h, okay? Now, with these two facts in mind, I'm going to go ahead and apply the first formula, which is the uh, limit definition of a derivative. So, um, if f of x is ln of x, then d, d 
dx of f of x is equal to dx of ln x equals the limit as h approaches zero. So this is f of x, I'm going to write ln x plus h, for f of x plus h minus the natural logarithm of x, and this will vary divided by h. Okay? So all I just did is I just plugged the natural logarithm into uh, the natural logarithm of x and the natural logarithm of x plus h into this formula right here for those two. Okay? All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply uh, formula number two, which is the difference of logarithm uh, to this difference in the numerator here. So we have a difference of logarithms in the numerator. If I apply the rule I just showed you, um, this is going to become the limit as h approaches zero of the natural logarithm of x plus h divided by x. Okay? So you're taking the log of this and that, so the difference is basically the quotient of these two items, okay? Divided by h. All right. So I hope you, see, you understood what I just did because you have natural logarithm of this business right here and a natural logarithm of that. So you just do this divided by this divided by that right there. That's how I came up with this expression. All right. So we'll apply that one rule. Now we're going to do some algebraic tricks to simplify this quotient in here. So this is going to become, uh, wrong color. This is going to become uh, the limit as h approaches zero of the natural logarithm of x over x plus h over x divided by h. Okay, what I'm going to do is do, I just broke down this fraction into these two independently, right? So I'm doing the reverse of combining fractions. So with that formulation, I can divide, right? So I'm going to have the limit as h approaches zero x of the natural logarithm of x over x is one. Let's do h over x alone, divided by, um, let's, let's, how about we go times one over h, okay? We can write it like that, write it like, write it as times one over h, okay? Uh, so now let's rewrite this around. I can put this one over h in front of this natural logarithm right here, so I can write it as the limit as h approaches zero of 1 over h times the natural logarithm of 1 plus h over x. Okay? Remember, this natural logarithm is one unit. Now that is in front, I'm going to make use of uh, the third formula I went over, which is a l and x, because if you have a constant multiply multiplied by a natural logarithm, that constant can actually become the power of the variable or the argument you're taking a natural logarithm of. So, uh, this 1 over h is going to now become a power of this uh, quantity 1 plus h over x. All right, so it's going to become, um, it's going to become the limit as h approaches 0 of the natural logarithm of 1 plus h over x raised to the 1 over h. Okay? All right, now I want to create an expression that looks like the last formula here, one plus x. So I need to make a substitution, okay? I need to make a substitution. I need this to become one variable. The variable I'm going to use, I'm going to use u. So on the, on the side here, I'm going to say let, let um, h equals u x, okay? Let h equals u x. Let's go ahead and make that substitution, okay? I'm going to call a code it so you don't get lost in my substitution. Limit as h approaches zero of the natural logarithm of one plus uh, instead of h, I'm going to put ux, ux over the x that was there before, and then times one over instead of h, I'm going to put what? ux because that was a substitution value. Yeah. Okay. All right, now let's uh, do some reduction on the inside. So this is going to become the limit as h approaches zero of the natural logarithm of uh, one plus, notice these two x's cancel. This one divide out, this two divide out. 
All right, so we have the one plus u. And then this one is one over u times one over x, okay? Now remember the rule we used here where we use the uh, coefficient of the natural logarithm? We made it a power. We're gonna do the reverse here. We're gonna, I'm gonna extract this, this portion of the power and I'm gonna make it actually a coefficient of natural logarithm. Okay, I'm making use of formula number three in the reverse order. I'm going from here to that, okay? Remember, since these two are equal, using the reflective pro property of equality, the left equals the right and the right equals the left. So I'm going in the other direction, okay? All right, so this can be brought to the front as a unit, so it's gonna become uh, the mass, the limit, as a to first is zero, of one over x times the natural logarithm of one plus u raised to the one over u, okay? Now we're gonna use the product property of limit. This is now gonna become the limit as h approaches zero of one over x times the limit as h approaches zero of the natural logarithm of one plus u raised to the one over u, okay? Now the first expression is independent of the limit direction. This is x, this is h different variables. So it's simply one over x times the limit as h approaches zero of the natural logarithm of one plus u to the one over u. Okay, so the question we're gonna ask itself is, as h approaches zero, what happens to you? What direction is u going, okay? So we know that um, h is equal to ux. Okay, if h is equal to ux, I can divide both sides by uh, x, and then I, I'll have um, I'll have u is equal to h over x. Okay. Now, if we, we let me write this in blue. If you take a look at the graph of l and x, uh, if you take a look at the graph of l and x, what do you notice about the restrictions on the domain of x? What are the acceptable values of x? Can x be negative, positive? What, what are the restrictions on x? So if we, if we sketch the graph, uh, we'll see that, um, that x goes in this direction. x can never be zero. x is always the domain required for x to be greater than zero. Okay, x is always greater than zero as the domain of the natural logarithm of x, right? So these are the only acceptable input values for x. So if h is going to zero and x is always greater than zero, what is u going to approach? So if h is going to zero and x is always positive, that guarantees that as h approaches zero, u also approaches zero because x is a positive number, x is always bigger than zero. So as long as this goes to zero, this whole expression is going to is going to go go to zero. All right. So I can now rewrite my limit up here as one over x times the limit as u approaches zero, because as h goes to zero, u goes to zero based on this construction we made up here um, of the natural logarithm of one plus u raised to the one over u. Now, if you focus your attention on this limit, it matches perfectly with formula number four. Formula number four tells me that e to the x is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of one plus x to the, I mean, raised to the one over x. So this whole, um, this whole story right here can be replaced. I can replace this piece right here with e to the x, okay? This whole expression right here is equal to e to the x. So that's gonna become this whole thing is going to become 1 over x times, based on the definition of e, e to the, uh, oh wait, wait a minute. Oh snap, I just messed up. Yeah, I did. All right, so uh, before we do that, there's something I have to do first before we do that. Uh, what I have to do, actually, I have the natural logarithm on the outside, so I need to uh, make a distribution here, okay? All right, so... I kind of got ahead of myself. So basically what I'll do is um, I'm gonna have one over x 
Now, this limit is, a, is affecting this argument of ln x right here, argument of ln x. So it's going to become the natural logarithm of the limit as u approaches 0. It now goes inside of uh, 1 plus u raised to the 1 over u. Okay? So just take the limit as u approaches 0 of the arguments of ln x. So this limit goes in there. Okay? So now uh, we can now make the substitution that I stated earlier. This limit right here is e to the x. This piece right here is e to the x. So uh, it's going to become 1 over x times the natural logarithm of this piece is e to the x, e to the x. Okay? Now, since uh, the natural logarithm and, and the exponential function are inverse functions, they will multiply each other out. So we're going to have 1 over x times 1. And your final answer is going to be 1 over x. So this is basically the derivative of the natural logarithm of x. Okay? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this uh, presentation. You can please subscribe to my channel to help support the creation of videos like this video. Uh, you can share with your friends on Facebook or Twitter or Google+. More videos can be found on myfordsurf.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.